The Kids Aren't Okay, Chapter 2, Beatrice, by Marengu on Quotev. Beatrice Mars, sometimes it's Clara Anderson, Vicky Hughes, or Alaska Lee. The perks of being an orphan is that you can pick whatever name you want and no one can verify it with your parents. She picked her last name as well, Mars. It used to be Venus, then before that, Mercury, because it sounded close to Freddie Mercury. But she settled with Beatrice Mars. Her foster mother was this old lady named Elsa Brown, and Beatrice Brown sounds like the most boring name in the whole world. Beatrice, Elsa said, poking her head into her room. Beatrice had her earbuds in, and her curly red copper hair covered her ears, muffing the sound of her foster mother's voice even more. Beatrice, Elsa retorted even louder. Beatrice looked up at her, a little startled. I brought you some pie. Would you like some? No, thank you, Beatrice said, bowing her head again. Elsa said that she didn't have to call her anything like mom or mother, which was pretty fine with her. She knew that soon she'll be passed on to another person as soon as Elsa got bored with her. It's downstairs if you'd like some. Also, I was wondering if you'd go to the store and buy something for me. I left the list downstairs once you have time, Elsa said. She went back down the steps slowly, since her back was starting to ache. Beatrice looked out the window to the city. The sky was blue and the clouds blocked the sun. It was almost the afternoon, and she'd be cooped up in her room for hours now. It was a weekend, and a girl her age should be outside with friends, touring downtown or going shopping at the mall. But even if she did have friends to go with, she'd have to leave again because she'd been reassigned to another family. The beat from the music she was listening to echoed in her brain. She was using Elsa's ancient iPod her grandson had given her for her birthday. She never met him, and Elsa always talked about him, like the doting grandmother she was. We just looked over the corner of the room. She still hadn't unpacked the little things she has, even though she's been here for almost a month. Her dull brown suitcase with stickers from Idaho and New York and California and other states sat alone in the corner of her attic room. Beatrice sighed. <sighs> she might as well get on with shopping. Elsa did bake a pie for her, after all. She put on a sweater from her suitcase and went downstairs. The list was on the countertop, just like Elsa told her. There was at least twenty dollars as well. On the list were basic necessities, eggs, milk, bread, but at the bottom was a little note that read, with the remaining dollars, you can get anything you'd like. Elsa's handwriting was neat and small. The note came with a heart, and Beatrice shoved the list into her pocket and left the house, not thinking too hard about the little message. She lived in a little pink house while it was a retro car parked in the insanely small parking space to the garage. Little Caddy were on the porch, and the whole house looked like it was made for a Tumblr aesthetic post. Beatrice walked down the concrete walkway past a few neighborhood kids. She tried to avoid eye contact with them. She didn't want to start friendly conversation because she was known as the orphan girl everywhere she went. Beatrice was able to reach the convenience store without a problem. She held her two fingers in her palm as she scanned the aisles for Elsa's ingredients. Eggs? Check. Milk? Check. Beatrice yawned and headed towards the cashier. She stood behind two girls who wore jackets and shorts. They were laughing with each other and showing photos of the cashier with black wavy hair and a zag fashion bangs checked out what they paid for. Oh. My. God. One of the girls said, turning around. She had freckles on her nose and sun-kissed skin. Aren't you that anti-social orphan girl from school? Crap. Sarah, you're right, the other girl said. We just could tell she applied for lip-pumping gloss and she had short blonde hair unlike her friend who had brown. So? So? Beatrice muttered, trying to hide behind her hair. Nothing, Sarah said, glaring. You don't have to be so rude. Yeah, her friend agreed. Did your parents, like, die in a fire or something? I don't know, Beatrice said. But I'm sure your brain cells were cooked pretty good. Sarah and her friend didn't get it, but the cashier chuckled. Beatrice caught herself smiling, too. Whatever, Sarah said, taking the plastic bag. Yeah, her friend agreed. Bye, orphan girl. Beatrice ignored them and moved up the line. She should mind her own business, the cashier girl said. Her name tag read Violet. I get it a lot, Beatrice said, handing Violet ten dollars. My parents didn't die in a fire. They abandoned me at the orphanage, so I kind of hope they did. That sucks, Violet said, handing her bag and change. Beatrice had four dollars left over. I'm going to get that, Beatrice said, pointing at the silver gum pack. Violet took one and added it to her bill. She printed a separate receipt and handed the receipt for Elsa's groceries and her pack of gum to Beatrice. Thanks, Violet, Beatrice said. 
She liked Violet's attitude. Violet smiled. You can call me V. Only my parents and suck-ups call me Violet. Okay, V. See you around, maybe, Beatrice said. She took her bag and receipts and exited the convenience store, holding her bag of groceries. Beatrice passed a black van. she never seen it before, but when it opened right when she passed, she started running. Proof that her instinct was right. Two men wearing all black suits stepped out and chased her. Beatrice had been in a situation like this before. When she was twelve, a psycho man tried to grab her and pull her into this beat-up pickup truck. She was about to evade him, but her foster mother didn't call the police. Beatrice's footsteps hit the pavement in rhythm. She heard herself panting <sighs> as she turned sharp corners trying to shake them off her tail. She didn't dare turn around or else she might bump into something, but she did hear their heavy footsteps behind her. Beatrice spotted an alley and realized a metal fence was parting on the other side. Experience was jumping over tall metal fences. She rushed to it, climbed the fence with ease. When she had gotten over it, she looked behind her. The men in black were stuck behind it, and they rattled the fence with the blank expressions and dark sunglasses. Losers, Beatrice mocked. She turned to jog away, but then she felt a sharp pain in her neck collapsing. She tried to feel what was on her skin. The end was soft. Was it a dart? Her mind became clouded. She felt herself catch herself before she collapsed. She tried to keep herself from falling asleep, but it was too strong, too welcoming. Soon she became overwhelmed, and the darkness took her. End of chapter two.